I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This obviously is not an antique chair, but it's a really nice contemporary armchair. Uh, it was on a moving truck, and uh, the truck was in an accident, and this chair got pretty banged up. You can see that this rear leg's completely broken off. It's broken completely through here on this side where the arm meets, broken here where the other arm meets, and also this rear leg is just about broken off. It's really shattered. So what I've got to do is at least take the front part of this chair off. Uh, I'm going to epoxy all these things back exactly where they belong. And then I'll go in afterwards and cut in uh, new pieces of wood across these breaks to hopefully give them some strength. This is such a nice uh, grain break here. I'll glue this back. I may not need to route in extra wood. I may be able from the inside uh, put a couple of screws across that break to give it some uh, added strength. First thing I'll do is uh, get the seat off. Uh, I can tell that the seat is so big there may be some problems there. I'm not sure how it comes off. But it's very odd how hard it is to get that seat out of there. I may have to put it, uh, install it when I glue, glue up the chair, when the chair is apart. I'm not sure if the heat can really penetrate all this wood to loosen the glue, but I thought I'd give it a try. Before I start wailing on this thing with a mallet, I thought I'd at least put the heat gun on it for two minutes. Yeah, this uh, dowel feels warm. I don't know for sure if, whether the, it came apart because of the heat or not. This I'll try without the heat just to see what happens. I see a little breaking around there. Now while I was doing that, this joint came loose. This one I think I see a little space here. So I think this is, uh, I see this joint is loose. Um, hopefully these blocks are come out, these kind of glue blocks with, with finger joints can be really tough to deal with sometimes. Now before I go any further, I'm going to mark these joints so I can remember what goes where. This joint has a space, so I gotta get this apart, but I think the glue block's holding it, so I wanna heat that up. I always give it at least uh, two minutes with the heat gun, and I time that looking at the clock. You can see there's always damage <clears throat> when you take apart these fingered glue blocks. There's nothing you can do about it, just glue it back. So in taking this apart, this leg, this shattered leg, came apart entirely. So I've got a real mess here. I've got all these pieces. I've got a lot of glue surface. I also got to glue it back up here. Uh, because of the way this is splintered, I can't dry clamp this. I can't, I think I've got one shot at putting this together the way that it goes. So I'm going to plan this out as best I can and then use epoxy, which is a nice slow setting epoxy. It'll give me plenty of time to work with this to get it clamped up. Okay, so I have a plan here. I took uh, my straight edge and covered one side with tape. I'm going to clamp that here. I think it's just going to help me get everything in alignment. Then this piece goes here. This hooks onto the, the tenon right there, which lines this up and clamp that. Then this bottom piece, I'll work epoxy all in there and I'll line this up, tap that into position. This piece goes there, and then I clamp this up. Then I'll go back and use this bending plywood to help clamp it and replace the spring clamps with regular fast action clamps. My first batch of epoxy, I'm going to mix up thin without any of the thickening agent to get down into all those splinters. I'm trying to work all this epoxy down in these cracks. The epoxy is going down in there. Now I'll mix up some more epoxy, only this time I'll add some thickener.
Well, I feel like I've got that clamped up pretty well. I'm, I'm hoping that this curve is the right curve, although that the tenon seems to locate everything. I think it's pretty good. I wish I could have gotten this part here together a little bit tighter, although it seems to be tight in this area. I'm not crazy about that, but I just don't think there's much I can do about it. And of course, you really got to clean your hands after that. I like using this uh, surgical brush. Okay, this is dried overnight. Let's take the clamps off and see what we've got. Well, it certainly looks like it went together pretty well. Everything seems to be uh, where it's supposed to be. There's some gaps here. Uh, well, I got some cleaning up to do. All right, we'll see. I may not know if it's exactly right until I get the other leg on. So I'll glue up this other side. I'll just use the same setup that I have for clamping. And um, I think even though there's a lot of side grain here, I think I'll stick with the epoxy. Since I epoxy the other side, I think I'll epoxy this side also. I just want to really uh, maximize the strength. Okay, this is dried overnight. You take the clamps off and uh, see what we've got. Looks all right. Okay, now back to the other side. Okay, so now on this area that was so badly shattered, I want to cut in here and put some new wood in here across that break. Now this break is right across this joint, uh, right where this tenon it's going to, got to go in there. So I don't want to cut too deeply. I don't want to interfere with this tenon or I want to interfere with it as little as possible. So I need to determine how far in I'm going to cut. So this board is, this piece of wood is one and a quarter inches thick. Usually if I'm cutting in to strengthen something, I like to go halfway. Um, I think that I'll go less. I'm just going to come in say a half an inch. So I'm going to mark this off with a piece of tape. And I need to decide how long the piece is going to be. I want to get well past all the shattered area. I think if I make this new piece I'm cutting in nine inches long, I think that'll span that area pretty well. Now, I've got a plywood jig that I made before just for doing this type of job. And I save these jigs because I can now clamp this up here where I want it and use this to guide the router. So I've put the template guide on my router base. I've got a half inch bit in the router. I want to measure how far the bit is comes off that guide, which is an eighth of an inch. So now I know I can set my template an eighth of an inch back from that piece of tape. And now I want to put some stop blocks here that'll stop that router right here. And that's going to stop the base. So I want that, I'm just looking down the template guide putting it about an eighth inch past that piece of tape. And then this block, same thing on the other side. Now I like to run my base here, just imagining how the router's gonna go, and that looks, that looks good to me. Uh, All together, I'm gonna cut about a half of an inch deep, so I'm gonna set my initial cut to cut just a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna do it in stages. Okay, so now I've got my cut made. So now I've got to mill up a piece of wood, a piece of maple, that will fit in there. Looks good. Okay, I just cut this piece of maple on the table saw to the, the right dimensions here. Now I've got to cut the length. The length looks pretty good. Now I'll uh, round off these corners to match the diameter of the uh, router bit in there, half inch. It looks like a, a pretty good fit. I'll glue it down. OK, 
Okay, that's good. Let's see what we got tomorrow. All right, looks good so far. Won't really know for sure till I, you know, sand it down and shape it. I'm a little thin right here. I'll leave that a little thick till I take it down from the other side. Okay, that's ready for sanding. Uh, so now I want to work on this other leg, the split where I glued up here. This is the other side of the chair I glued up. I've been thinking about putting a, from the inside, uh, drilling a couple of screws through there, but as I look at this, this was such a good glue joint, it's such a long joint, so much glue surface, and I epoxied it back together dead on. I think I'm just going to leave it alone. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tape off this inner part and I'm going to sand down and refinish both side pieces here. You can see that this is where the crack piece was glued up and it's important to sand that till it's completely all the same colors. After sanding with the orbital sander, uh, now I'm sanding by hand. I'll sand with 100 and then 150. It's important to make sure there's no uh, orbital marks. All right, I've sanded it really well to 220. And I mean, I've sanded it really well, as well as I can. This is a hard wood. It's like beach, something like that. You need to make sure it's really, really smooth so that the stain is as even as possible. And I'm going to stain this first with a, a dye stain light red mahogany. Comparing it to my piece of the chair here, I think it's going to be okay. As long as it's a bit lighter than this, I'll be good. The uh, dye stain is dry and I'm going to uh, put some mahogany uh, oil bed stain over that. Try a little corner down here to see what it looks like. That's good, it's, a, it's pretty close. It maybe will need a little bit of red toner to bring it into that, but I like what I'm seeing. Okay, I've let the oil stain dry, so now I'm gonna brush on a coat of shellac. I've allowed the shellac to dry overnight. And so now I know I've got to do some toning. I can see from this sample I've been using that I'm definitely a little bit browner. What I do is I have a piece of black construction paper here that I've drilled two holes in. And that's what I use to check color with. I place these on the two things and so you can really see what you need to do. And actually, I knew starting out that this sample was lighter and that was fine. My color's good, but it's, it's way browner. It needs to be redder. But what really matters is not this piece, but the rest of this piece. So I'm gonna cut the paper back here and compare what I've got to the crest strap. And so right away I can see how much browner this crest rail is and the rest of this back compared to my sample. I knew that going into it, but I wanted to use a sample that was lighter just so I didn't go overboard. I think maybe I just need a little mahogany toner on here. So I'll seal this back up, sand my shellac, and uh, try toning this a little bit and see how it looks. I'm really going to sand lightly with just some 500 gold. I don't want to pull up any color that I already have. You can see color on the sandpaper, so that's why I've got to be really careful sanding. I've got a brown mahogany toner. Now let's see what it looks like. It's looking okay, I think. I may have to let this dry to see for sure. And although I'm a little unsure of the color, maybe a little browner, I still like what I see. And so I'm gonna go ahead and tone 
everything with the brown mahogany. And then I'll decide what and if what other kind of toner I need to use. I've let the toner dry and so I'm looking at my color. It's still different. It's still a little lighter, but it's actually really close. Uh, one of the difficulties is that the, the factory finish here is a little more opaque looking than my finish and it's very very flat that's going to make a difference too. I pulled back the paper on the slat and the the slats are even lighter than the crust rail so I'm thinking that I'm okay I'm not going to mess around with this color anymore. And I'm going to bring one of the other chairs from the set over here take a look at it too. Yeah I'm going to call that a day. I mean, the colors are kind of all over the place, and I'm right there within the spec, so it's good. Now, all I need to do is pay a little bit more attention to my new piece of wood right here. I'm going to take that off and color it a little bit. Okay, I've sprayed about, I don't know, maybe eight coats on all this, both sides with my flat aerosol and it, uh, it looks good. It's nice and low luster and it looks like, like a factory finish. So now I'm going to remove all my tape and stand back and see how it looks. Yeah, I think the uh, color looks pretty good. It looks really good with the crest rail. These are lighter, but that's okay. They're all in the same ballpark. I'll know better when I hold this up and compare it to some of the other chairs in the set. Comparing this to one of the other chairs, I think it looks really good. So I can, uh, I think I can now proceed gluing the chair up. Um, I've got this mortise cleaned out. I'm hitting my new piece of wood in the back here and I don't want to cut any of that away. So I may have to shorten the tenon just a touch. It's my depth. See where those these fingered corner blocks are. The wood's all split and kind of messed up. But all I can do is work glue as best I can into all those splits. I'm trying hard to keep this from splitting the rest of the way. I'm trying to keep this from splitting the rest of the way. I'm not sure it's worth it. What's weird about this chair is I've got to put the seat in before I clamp it up. I did not dry clamp this completely together because I was afraid that if I did it would be too difficult to get it apart but I kind of wish I had I think I've got them now I right, the glue's dried overnight let's take the clamps off and Alright, it, uh, it seems really good. Now I've just got to uh, go over the whole chair, uh, clean up any glue that's on it, and look for uh, any other touch-ups that, that might be necessary. I don't see any at first. There were some scuff marks in this area and over here where I had to put sandpaper to keep my clamps from slipping. So I'm just sanding those areas lightly with a little 500 and then I hit them with the aerosol. Alright, there it is. 
This is a contemporary chair that was uh, badly damaged. And uh, if you remember, both back legs were broken. Uh, this was broken in this area and this area. This, the same basic areas, except it was really badly broken here. And this is where I used a router and routed in a new piece of wood. But, uh, I think it looks pretty good.